This project can be a gigantic money pit. Am I going to spoil what is already on there? Yes, I will. Fuck it. Burning things down. I did see sparks. It was just fucked up. Like I tried three nights in a row. I think I get out my credit card at least once a day. I'm very happy to see this shit right there without burning my house off. But yeah, fucking nightmare. Hello everyone, this is update for the week number three of me working on a 2D printed 2 degrees of freedom pen plotter robot. This is a mouthful, but it's essentially to also help with the SEO of these videos. So, as you may know, I am right now working on a robot. My two last videos for the past two weeks have been about this, and this is the new update. And so, this past week, what have I done? First of all, let's talk about mathematics. To remind you what this project is about, let's imagine you have a piece of paper right there, and this is essentially a pen plotter. But instead of having a gantry, aka two axes, one like this and one like this with pen on the thing, this moving in the X and this moving in the Y, this is not what I want to do. I want to have a parallel axis robot. I think some people also call it a pentagraph, but essentially you have your two motors right there. So this is the top down view, one motor at the top, one motor at the bottom and two arms going like this. This is one right there. And this is the other one right here, right? And they are joined right there. And this is where the pen would be, the end effector. So that's the idea. I did a bunch of research, but something I need to do at some point is working out the mathematics behind it. So with these two motors, I need to work out the inputs and the outputs of the system. The thing I want to pass to actually this robot is an XY position of the end effector right there, XY, and that would return me the two angles right there of my two motors. And apart from the end goal of this project, it's also the journey. I want to learn new stuff. And going into it, I thought to myself, can I work out the math all by myself? And if yes, how? And so with a lot of excitement and maybe a little bit too much ego, I did a bunch of research and I think I found an okay way to compute exactly this. So I'm going to redo the same thing. It's going to be a top down view, boom, but on the side this time, there you go. And what do I need to compute the angles of my two motors right there? I thought about it. And what if we actually decompose this problem into two? First one being computing based of the distance of my X, Y coordinate, according to the motor, obviously like this, if we create a reference frame, this being zero, this being Y and this being X. So yeah, first of all, just based of a, of a distance, what would be the mathematics for that? And then based of the angle of this end effector, let's say like it was there. Hi, this is Marius from the future. I'm editing this video. Turns out speaking about inverse kinematics math for a bunch of minutes is not really interesting and I don't want you to click off. So in the meantime, we're just going to react to some memes. No pissing the <laughs> Stop now! Stop! Depressed brake pedal to start? Okay. You are a failure. Nobody loves you. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. We can stop here. We can stop here. I, I hope I'm done with the math stuff. Jesus Christ. Back to the video. This is the very basic math. So this was the idea of the project. I realized that I talk way too much about this and I think people would not be too interested in, two, in some uh, very basic trigonometry. So we will see if that will make the final cut. We shall see. I'm way too low right now again. Jesus Christ. Long story short, to try this out, I had an idea of maybe creating a very fast and simple processing sketch that would do just that. And if you run that, I found out that this is actually working. So yeah, based off the position of my mouse, this returns two angles. So one for the motor that goes like this and the other one that goes like that. In any case, I think it works. On paper, it works. We will see for the physical things because like there are many different things that can go wrong until we actually integrate that into the hardware. But until then, this is actually fucking working, which is nice. So yeah, I was pretty happy about that. So for this week, mathematics, we should be done with it. It would just be a matter of integrating that into C++ for it to be on my ESP32. But apart from that, I think we are done. Next, what is new on the mechanical side? So last week I talked about Fusion 360 and uh, how much I was bothered by the personal plan of Fusion 360. And so I tried things out in Onshape. I'm technically still a student, so I am using the student version right there. Uh, Onshape is, is quite literally amazing. Essentially Fusion 360, but with no limit for actual files somehow feels way less clunky. Everything is saved online. And I don't know, so far, I, re I really like it. Like I enjoy opening it up and designing stuff in it, which is great. It's also slowly becoming, I think, an industry standard. Like I know that in my company right now, we also do use Onshape. So if I also learn yet another tool that would allow me to, I don't know, work with that in a professional environment, I mean, 
I'm down. It's just a win-win situation right there. So what has been done? First of all, um, literally redoing everything in Onshape, first of all, to get my hands like dirty with the program, but also to have everything in one single place. So the YAM prototype I showed you last week is just the same, but here. But also, I spoil it already, this is the Mozart chassis that is in two parts, one on the top, one for the bottom. I did it in two parts so that you can, first of all, stick the motors, one on top, one on the bottom, and then stick together right there. Because like, if this would be one single piece, you would have a problem like inserting M3 screws in there. But whatever, this is the piece and I already printed it. Um, am I going to spoil what is already on there? Yes, I will, fuck it. So yeah, the Y part right there, the motor chassis, and it works greatly. I know my screws are way too long. I am waiting right now on a screw set um, of different M3 length, lengths, lengths, yeah, length with an S at the end. But yeah, the motor chassis is done and it works quite okay. Feels flimsy. I'm not gonna lie, it feels flimsy, but for a prototype, I mean, sounds all right to me. Oh, and also, yeah, my Prusa, my good old Prusa i3 Mark III S Plus has been a workhorse. Like, it's just great. I've been also like transitioning from PLA to PETG specifically for this project because nowadays it's not that much more expensive than PLA. It feels better and it sticks, in my opinion, better to the printing surface. The print bed, I should say. But yeah, on shape, my Prusa 3D printing, PETG, it's been a gigantic pleasure to work with this and also i do have like loads of 3d printing at work that are sla even with that i still take like a huge amount of pleasure <clears throat> of just coming home and then just like plugging my stuff into my printer and then just like not enough time to cook that my piece is already ready and yeah you can have something pretty cool looking like this this is nice so yeah mechanically speaking this is what's new now let's talk electronics this is the funny bit right there so i gathered everything i needed for this project finally uh, you don't see it on this picture but i have my transformer right there from my uh, my good old ac to dc transformer um literally while plugging things into it since we are working with 220 volts we are in glorious europe i am always scared of burning things down like something can just can just go wrong literally but right now i I did see sparks, but like, that's, that's the only red flag that happened to me with this transformer. But apart from that, everything is here for me to finally like make stuff move. And so I was very excited because I have the transformer, I have the drivers, I have the motors, I have the cables. So I need to have everything to at least make the stepper motors move, right? Well, in my excitement to try things out instantly, uh, it took me three days to finally make the motors work. Like I debugged everything, verified that I had the right voltage. I thought that my capacitors were too much in the beginning. I was like, maybe I fried the boards. Uh, and it took me a long time. And I, and I did follow like every single tutorial you could, found, you, you could find about the subject. Like I redid um, the wiring, like I think four times. It was just fucked up. Like I tried three nights in a row and, and nothing. And I was like, there is something wrong with me or with my stepper motors. And now check the connectivity. And I was like, something is wrong. That's the thing I am used to do. I just didn't take enough time and didn't breathe enough while working on this fucking project. So this is a classic schematics on how to use one of these drivers. So you take the 12 volt right there, and this is what like drives the motor. Essentially, like this needs uh, a little bit more juice than the 3.3 volts of my ESP32. And the juice goes from here to here, right? Uh, let me show you the actual pins of this board. Yeah, there you go. So yeah, those four outputs right there, those are for the phases of the motor. And so VDD and ground right there, this is for the 12 volt. Nope, I'm seeing something stupid. The VDD and ground right there, this is uh, from the card to drive the logic. And this VMOT for, I, I guess, like voltage for the motor and ground, this is from the adapter, the 12 volt adapter. That means like from AC to DC, you, you, are, you are following me, I guess. And these two logic pins right there, step and direction, is the logic coming from DSP32. Um, those three, like this is for micro stepping. I will not go into the details. There are so many tutorials that would be way better than me speaking about it, about this, but like you could also use this, but what if I Essentially, the important part are uh, like the number of steps you want to take for your stepper motor, the direction where it's going, the different faces connected to the motor, and the juice. And that should be it. And I tried that like so many different times. And uh, turns out, if you just look closely enough at the schematics right there, there is a cable that I just completely ignored. This is this one right there. This cable is connected to the sleep 
pin of the actual driver, meaning that when this is not juiced up, the board is just considered to be asleep. It just doesn't use any juice. And turns out I just need that tiny little cable to make everything work. And everything worked since the beginning. Like my code was actually working. The motors was working. The motor was working. And yeah, so yeah, this is a, a, a video of me like proudly finally having like a pin that fucking moves. But yeah, this was a gigantic relief obviously but yeah fucking nightmare because also like these parts right there like uh between me like finding different motors the drivers the multimeter i got my soldering iron is coming as well with a few clamps and that kind of stuff like this project if i am not careful enough can be a gigantic money pit i'm not scared to dispense my money because that would also be for future projects but for the moment damn like i think i get out my credit card at least once a day so yeah we have motors that finally can fucking rotate and that's great and I am very happy about it. Finally, you can hear it in my voice that I'm so happy. I need to stop lowering down the seat. Jesus Christ. And so, yeah, that's it. Well, that's, I, I could have talked about this in the mechanical part, but I literally did that like yesterday, late at night. We have a working like mechanical prototype of the thing. And so this is great, meaning that now I can finally test my math function to try to see if i can like just move this thing there is obviously like no pens on this or whatever i need to work on the actual mechanism to hold the pens but like we have just like a simple stopper to be able to move this but yeah like i'm very happy to see this shit right there you don't understand how happy i am it doesn't seem like a lot it doesn't seem like a lot but i did it from scratch without losing any fingers without burning my house off and again like apart from the hardware everything is 3d printed which is fucking great and with models that, that have been done from scratch every time which is nice learning so much from this this is great i would like suggest literally anyone in the tech industry like interested into 3d printing or electronics to do a project like that you're gonna bite your fingers off for sure but oh my god i mean look at it so yeah that's it for this week what will be the goal for next week i already talked about it but now that i have this i would love to be able to just pass in some xy coordinates and having this thing move for next week we shall see how that works out but i would love to have that and also looking into how to drive two stepper motors at once because i have no idea on how to do that properly also maybe start to think about the software a little bit you know me i do a bunch of 3js type of stuff related to web and this is an esp32 that can connect to the internet and so i would love to try to find ideas to use 3.js or webgl in general and play with this thing right there i don't know what to do yet uh but this can be only fun. Well, I don't know what to do. I have a couple of ideas. And if that's interesting to you, obviously, hit the subscribe button. I mean, it feels so greasy to say that. Jesus Christ. In any case, that's it. Very excited about this project. Love to learn new stuff. And this has been going fantastically well. That's it for me. Thank you for tuning in. And I see you guys soon on the internet. Bye-bye, everyone.